Welcome to Max Out with Mason. So on today's episode, what we're going to talk about is happiness. And more specifically, that happiness does not come from externals. So what does this mean, you may ask? Well, what externals are, are things that are not within your own mind. So whatever you're not thinking or doing basically whatever is not in your control if you let your happiness rely on that say eating ice cream um going for a nice walk um just letting your happiness rely on things that are not readily available to you at all times and the only things that are readily available to you at all times are your own mind so Happiness doesn't rely on externals. Why is that? Because if you let your happiness rely on externals, your happiness will be temporary joy, not happiness. You'll experience lots of temporary joy, and you'll become a hedonist. What is a hedonist? A hedonist is someone who constantly seeks pleasure. But what's wrong with hedonism? Hedonism is bad because there's a thing called diminishing returns. The more you seek pleasure, the more you seek these short-term rewards, the less they give you in the long term, which basically ends up as you constantly chasing and you getting nowhere in life. So what happens is, let's say, let's take the nine to five average worker, for example, you wake up at nine o'clock because you got no sleep last night. You go to your job, super dirty, super flushed because you just got a horrible night to sleep, right? And what are you going to do now? It's like you're going to work for eight hours, right? You get home from your job, from your nine to five job, eat dinner, eat whatever food you need to eat. It's probably going to be some crappy food. You're probably going to get fat over time because you're so stressed out. And then you turn on the TV, you play video games, you watch Netflix, um, you open up the phone, you argue with people online until 4 a.m. because you're just filling this void and you're searching for that next hit of pleasure, that next hit of instant gratification. And after not finding it, eventually you're going to get tired and you're going to go to bed and then you're going to wake up again at 9 o'clock exhausted. So you don't want to live a life like this. You don't want to let your happiness rely on externals because what is this going to do with your life? In the end, it's going to make you depressed and it's going to make you constantly chasing something that doesn't exist which is happiness from externals where does happiness come from happiness comes from within as cliche as it sounds as woo-woo spiritualist as it sounds this is actually one of the greatest lessons i learned from my woo-woo spirituality phase is that happiness comes from within And if you want to be happy, you have to be present. Now, what does this mean? Well, you don't really understand what I'm saying unless you've actually meditated. And when I say that, I don't mean a guided meditation. I don't mean just sitting there. I mean actually been in the present moment before, which actually takes quite a a bit of work. Um, I did an hour-long guided meditation one time and I I just said that guided meditations don't count but I actually got into this state and I can consistently hit this state now it's basically a point where you are so present where all your judgment ceases to exist or at least most of your judgment ceases to exist all of your thoughts about reality all of your limiting beliefs all of your issues and All of your just limitations just kind of fade away. And all that there is is the present and you. And really, you kind of merge with the present. You kind of become reality in that state. And uh, this kind of ties down to Stoicism in a way. If you're familiar with the Stoic philosophy, they say amor fati or amor fati. And basically what this means is love your fate. And loving your fate is a very, very hard thing to do, especially in situations that are, like, it would seem crazy to love your fate. Like, 
I'm telling you, when I'm telling you to love your faith, I'm telling you, when a family member dies, to love and appreciate that situation. I'm telling you, when you don't have food on your plate, to love and appreciate that situation. When, uh, when you go through a horrible breakup, to love and appreciate that situation. When you have to work and you hate your job, to love and appreciate that situation. I'm telling you, when you are starting a new habit or you're trying to kick an old habit out of the door and you don't make any progress for six months, I'm telling you to love and appreciate that situation. This is what being present does to you. And most of the time, if you are present, then you really, you can't not make progress because um, this is a topic for another video, but awareness is self-curative. The more you are aware of your situation and your reality, the more your life kind of seems to unfold naturally. And it's just like a natural process. It's like a flow state, essentially. You're just flowing with life. You're intertwang intertwangled with life, intertangled with life. And everything is just simpler and everything is easier. It's like... Let's say you're trying to form a meditation habit, right? You're trying to meditate every day for an hour, for an hour long. That's a big, big step, right? At first, you're going to come up with all these excuses. You're going to have a very, very full mind. You're going to have a very overactive monkey mind, as uh, as some monks say. You're going to have a monkey mind, right? And what happens when you have this monkey mind is you're not going to make progress at first. You're going to be constantly thinking about meditation but you're never going to actually do it you're going to be wanting to meditate you're going to never actually do it and I'm kind of in a state like this right now because it's just like I keep thinking about meditation I'm, I keep forgetting to do it which is which is a common trap in uh, forming a meditation habit I have had a meditation habit form before but keeping one is just as hard as forming it believe it or not so yeah so imagine someone who's constantly not present constantly thinking about the past constantly having anxiety about the future they're not going to be able to form a meditation habit because how are you going to be present if you can't even be present in your day-to-day -day life that's a big uh that's a big thing to try and think about but then let's take someone who is very present who doesn't judge the present moment who is very in reality and inter intertwined with reality Someone like this is going to be so ultra present already that meditation is going to feel natural to them. It's going to feel like a like just another thing that they can add on to their life and it's going to obviously meditation is positive, so it's going to be easy for these already developed people to um to put it into their life and to put it into practice. So yeah. You're going to want to be understanding that everything is temporary this is also um in stoicism it's kind of like memento mori remember death remember everyone you know is gonna die every relationship you have in life um every material possession um your own mind everything is gonna be gone one day not if it leaves you in your life. If it doesn't do that, if it doesn't leave you in your life, then what's going to take it away from your life is your own death. So everything's going to be gone one day. And if you accept this and you realize this, how are you going to be able to live and hate things? Like, let's let's say, for example, if you're very into politics and you um, you understand that Every single conservative, liberal, libertarian, progressive, authoritarian, whatever you are, anarchist, every single one of them is going to be dead one day. How can you care about politics to the extent that some people do if you understand that all this is going to be gone, that your mind's going to be wiped from the face of reality somehow? How are you, how are you going to invest in these lower behaviors if you understand that? And that's another thing. 
those people that are constantly worried about politics, you know, not trying to bash on them, but if you're so into politics to a point where it takes you away from the present moment and your source of happiness is arguing with people online, that's going to be your new life. You're going to just make a living from arguing with people online. You might not make a living. You might still have a nine to five or something, but your whole entire life is going to be this constant seeking of destroying some person's psyche online, right? And there's no true happiness in this. There's no true joy in this because it's external and you're not going to have access to it at all times. Sure, you can look up you can look up some posts that you made 10 years ago and uh show it to some person like, "Yo, look at look at how I destroyed this person online." It's like they don't care. <laughs> and are you really you you got to be very honest with yourself. Are you really happy about that? Are you really happy that you just like ruined someone's day and might have corrupted someone's mind, given them trauma. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm not saying trauma as in like very serious trauma, but I'm saying like giving them some some sort of mental trauma, like it's possible. So yeah. Grounding. Grounding is a very, very important aspect of happiness. If you want to be happy, you need to ground yourself. Not only in the present moment, like I already stated. You need to ground yourself in a life philosophy and a set of principles that you can keep with you at all times. For me, this is kind of Stoicism. This is kind of um, the philosophy of the ancient Greeks and Romans. This is the Stoics. The reason that I choose this is because they have techniques deployable at all times for negative emotions. And not only negative emotions, but also positive emotions they have this idea of neutrality to just stay grounded in the middle and to not let positive emotions carry you one way and to not let negative emotions carry you the other way because you can get lost in joy and you can get lost in grief you can get lost in any sort of emotion it's good to ground yourself in a central point so that if one tries to tug you one way you stay there and this is not saying to never change this is not saying to never you know become egotistical and think that all your ideas are right or anything like that it's like you can change but always keep your life philosophy and always keep your main principles grounded within you and you can even improve on these principles as you get older you can get better at these principles you can practice them better let's say if you're a buddhist or a christian or a hindu i don't know is it hinduist or hindu i don't know um let's say you're someone like that i'm pretty sure it's hinduist um anything like that use that as your life philosophy use your morals and use your virtues and live by them and you'll notice that the more you ground yourself in these things the more you can deal with situations this ties back with the amor fati how are you going to love your fate if you can't deal with a situation properly so it's like let's say a, a very close relative of mine dies right if I have to love my fate and I don't have any techniques or anything readily available to actually love my fate, then how am I going to do it? It's like, if I was in that situation, I would probably use a technique of mine that I've used throughout my entire life of just knowing that I'm glad that they lived the whole life and I'm glad that um, I was able to live my life with them as I could and I'm just glad that I had some time with them, you know, memento, memento mori, everyone's going to die, and it's it's more about the time that you spend with them that while they're alive, more than uh, after they're dead, wanting to spend more time with them, because obviously that's irrational, and you're never going to get more time with them, so you're going to want to understand how situations can go wrong. So everything's going to go wrong in life. People are going to try and deceive you. Um, not to be not to be paranoid or anything, but there's lots of people out to get you in life. And that's just, that's just the nature of society at, at this point. And lots of things can go wrong. You can try and employ a new habit, a new healthy habit into your life. You can, you know, try and exercise daily 
or exercise four times a week and it can go brutally wrong you can get an injury um you can you know you can lose your leg (laughs) you need to understand not to be paranoid again but you need to understand how many things can go wrong in marcus aurelius he woke up every single day um i have his book down here somewhere um yeah marcus aurelius right here meditations he says every morning he would wake up here let me find the let me find the chapter right here it's on here book two he says when you wake up in the morning tell yourself the people i will deal with today will be meddling ungrateful arrogant dishonest jealous and surly they are like this because they can't tell good from evil but i've seen the beauty of good the ugliness of evil and recognize that the wrongdoer has nature related to my own not of the same blood or birth but the same mind and possessing a share of the divine and so none of them can hurt me no no one can implicate me in ugliness nor i can feel angry at my relative or hate him we were born to work together like feet hands and eyes like the two rows of teeth upper and lower to obstruct each other is unnatural to feel angry at someone to turn your back on him these are obstructions So it's like you have to understand that things are going to go wrong. You have to understand that people are going to try and deceive you. But you have to also be grounded in your principles like Marcus Aurelius was. You have to realize that things are going to go wrong. But to go against them and to get angry and to let your happiness, again, rely on others. If you're letting your happiness rely on others and others are mean to you, you're not going to be happy because everyone's going to be mean to you. So there's so many mean people out there. You're going to have to rely on your own happiness because if you rely on others, again, then (laughs) you're just going to be depressed all the time. I'm just being honest. So like you said, going against um, them with anger or, you know, mirroring their emotions back to them, that's probably the most arrogant thing that you could do. And it's just not a good idea in general. So next you don't want to take life for granted this is very important i can't stress this enough so yeah don't take life for granted the amount of people that live life today and complain about it is disgusting not to put my judgment on the situation but still people are taking their life for granted i mean even a chance according to science it's like one in three trillion to be born on this earth as a human being and not only you're born as a human being but you're also put on here and if you're watching this video you're probably in a developed country with a sort of stable family with clothes to wear with food to eat with water to drink with a phone or a computer I mean, you have to understand how lucky and how beautiful this all is. You you can't take life for granted. I mean, I'll see people TikTok, right? Um, I used to watch a lot of TikTok and it was like there's so many people who are just drowning in their own ungratefulness for life. It's like they just are completely ungrateful for life. I don't know how you can live like this. They're just like I heard a quote the other day. It was like once I die, uh, don't want me back because I'm just glad that I lived this already and I got it over with or something like that. And they were like, oh, I got life over with. And I'm like, you just want to get life over with? You were given this, like, take a moment and just sit here, right? Look around, look at your hand, look at look at whatever you want to look at and understand that you're alive right now. And try and understand and appreciate how insanely wild it is that you are alive. And try and appreciate that just for a moment. Just sit there. I'll let let you. I'll let you go. So, yeah. You're alive. And to take this life for granted is probably the most unwise thing that you could do with your life. To think that okay, I'm, I was given this life. And then to blame your suffering on other people. Were you born to suffer? 
It's like there, there comes a point in your life where you just have to choose. You have to choose, is it suffering or do I work on myself and master myself and stop suffering? It's like <laughs> you can't take life for granted. This is a gift. It's I like to call it a divine gift. And if you're depressed, if you're not to hate on mental illness or, you know, degrade mental illness, but if you're depressed, you have anxiety, um, I know these are serious issues, but you need a genuine desire to work around them to finish and to cure the mental illness, right? You can't take life for granted. You can't think that life has given you all these problems and it's just pure suffering and life is just horrible. Sure, you can, you can literally live hell on earth. You can, you can live a life of hell, but why not turn it to heaven? I mean, you were only given one life. People say YOLO and then use that as an excuse to ruin their life. Say YOLO and use that as an excuse to maximize, maximize your life, max it out. You know, you just need to not take life for granted. Realize that this is a very divine and important gift that you were given. You're put on this earth because you have a ton of shit to do. <laughs> so yeah, this ties in with the next thing. Do meaningful things. If you want to live a purposeful and a happy life and you're not doing any meaningful things, obviously meaning is self-generated. There is no such thing as true meaning. But let's compare um, working as a janitor for 60 hours a week compared to, um, let's say a monk in, in like Africa or Asia, let's compare those two. So we have the janitor who gets up every morning and he goes to work and he just works for 10 hours, 12 hours a day for five, six, seven days a week, sweeping and cleaning and smelling bad. And he hates his job, not saying that he has to, but he most likely hates his job and he's not really making any forward progress in his mind and he's not happy because how can you be happy if all your time is dedicated towards a repetitive job and you don't have any time to work on yourself? So let's take the example of the monk. The monk is going to be waking up every single day working on himself, right? He's going to be meditating for hours or if he's like a shaman he's going to be doing shamanistic breathing or vipinasa or some form of breathing technique or yoga and he's going to be dedicating his practice daily and he's going to be most likely writing down his thoughts and communicating with like-minded people and growing himself as a person and growing his understanding of nature and reality and all these great things every single day. And like I said, meaning is self-generated, but like how are you going to create meaning in life if you don't do something that you think is meaningful? I mean, if you find fulfillment and you think the ultimate meaning of life is to be a janitor, go for it. If that's going to make you happy and that's not relying on externals because that's going to be a mental thing. If that's going to become your happiness then so be it be be the best janitor that you can be but for most people this is not the case it's going to be like you have to find your own um passions in life and you have to find your own path and you have to understand that um there is no there's no true path but the most rewarding path really is whatever you love and then mastering that and mastering yourself along with it. So if you, if you really like reading books, become a professional book reader and writer. And then along with that, you'll learn so much and you can really master yourself and you can maybe instill a meditation habit while you're doing it and everything will just flow together. And if you're mastering your craft and yourself at the same time, I I definitely believe that this will lead to the most fulfilling life possible. So that ties in again. Everything here ties into this last point. You need to work on yourself. You need to treat yourself like you are a 
project, right? You're an experiment because really the, the reason that you're alive is like experimentation. It's like no one human is the same. And it's like, it's a massive experiment basically. So you need to work on yourself. You need to be meditating. You need to be reading. Um, you need to be doing what you're passionate about. Not saying that you need to meditate or read, but something similar. You need to be able to get present. You need to be able to get knowledge. You need to be healthy. You need to, if, if you, if you're healthy, everything will stem from that and everything will spiral and you'll grow from that, which is very important. Um, you need to be drinking the adequate amount of water. You stay hydrated. You need to be having healthy relationships with people and not letting other people tear you down or even sometimes bring you up. Because if you let people bring you up, think about this. If you let people bring you up, what's that going to do? Letting others bring you up is going to make it so when you're not around those people, you're down. Your, your happiness is going to rely on externals. And that's like another issue. You can't, you can't let that happen. So, yeah. Your happiness will come straight from your own minds. And this is a very, very important thing to realize. So, yeah. All right, I'm going to end this episode here. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Max Out with Mason. I'll see you guys in the next one.